All right, we're going to go ahead and call the uh, January 23rd, 2012 Public Safety Committee to order, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of last month. So moved. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Call opposed. Motion is carried. First on the agenda tonight will be the Correctional Work Center reports. How you doing? And it's on your desk. Okay, uh, first page is the one over the minutes of the uh, last board meeting on Monday the 9th of this month. Uh, Cover the board of expenditures. Um, we addressed, we have a couple of lines on the budget lines that we just need to monitor closely for the remainder of the fiscal year. Second item was the reappointment of my position, which was approved by the board. I guess you were in agreement with that. I guess I was. <laughs> so, uh, third item was the budget amendment, which was um, actually putting money into uh, line 499 was a $2,000 grant we received from Community Foundation for the. Uh, Doghouse project which we were approved for. Let's talk about the art project. Um, <coughs> we had an art instructor. Um, she also teaches at, I believe, MTSU, Miss Ann Carruthers, going to volunteer services to uh, begin an art class for the inmates. Um, we hope to get that started also next month. Should be a great program with her assistance. Is she just a citizen or? Does she work for the county or something? No, she does not. Teacher she's a um, she. I believe she taught at MTSU at some point. Um, the American uh, Correction Association accreditation process is we almost on the la last leg of that. Um, we s submitted our first half of the payment, and now we are officially scheduled for accreditation audit on um, this. Date is incorrect is actually May 21st. We'll be here for two to three days to actually do a, an audit or an inspection of the facility and then approve this <coughs> for accreditation. And based on trying to achieve that, we had to make sure we had some agreements cover certain aspects of the daily operation pertaining to inmates' welfare and guidance center dealing with mental health. We are currently working on an agreement with them to, when it, when needed, we can always, always send inmates there to be assessed. Um, the other, we're transporting the inmates now to and from court when we receive from the sheriff's department, et cetera, the medical appointments. Who's what, doing, who does that? We're doing it now. We, the <coughs> sheriff's department used to do it. We took over. It's been a couple of weeks now. So one of your associates employees? The it? employee, yes. Okay. A guard? Right, an officer, yes. Uh, we also worked on a dental agreement with a local dentist in town, uh, Dr. Atkinson. And when needed, will be using <coughs> services for that aspect. Um, the board. We discussed the um, transfer of inmates and the volume and our census, and it's getting better. We officially took over the um, classification process and dealing with their medical staff on a daily basis to screen the inmates we're receiving. So now it's kind of, you know, this is our second week, so it's picking up a little bit more rapidly than the past. So we should start hopefully seeing the count go up gradually in the next within the next month when you're talking about transporting you're talking about to doctor's appointments to yes. the court or doctor's any, any, any yeah. transportation needs right. that we deem necessary at the correctional work center we have to take care of it from now on um what do you what do you take them in what they, what vehicle we had currently had two vans that we use for those uh, transportation issues 
and also you're talking to Ms. Mary Snyder with drug court program um, to probably relocate and use our facility for some of their operations. So that's still in talks and it sh you know, if everything works out, it should be a good relationship. So we're still working with them on that. We've had some really good meetings dealing with the work lease program with some employees in town. Some some of the better employees are here are very eager to, to use these inmates in the work lease program. It really uh, surprised me that they were that receptive to doing that. And um, that is going to be a great collaboration with some of these employees. When will they work during the day and go back and be incarcerated at night? Is that what it? Right. The, right now, we probably have first and maybe swing shift people. You know, we haven't anybody identified anybody that might want to work midnight. We probably won't do that in the beginning, maybe down the road as the program grows. But currently, it will be day and evenings. So, how will they get to and from? If they cannot provide their own transportation, someone has to pick them up, and we have to screen those individuals. We are also able to do that for them and just charge them a, a mm -hmm. nominal fee. I know Metro, they're allowed to use buses. Like they can just ride the Rover, okay. you know, but. It, that's and really they su not supposed to drive themselves, so you know if that's something we can work out with Rover, you know, and, and they will be on a surveillance system, so you know we, it's not just we're going to take their word for it. You know, at any point we can track them and see exactly the satellite system where they <coughs> actually are. So that's really going to be a great benefit to us. Is this work release like during the latter part of their sentence, or how does it work? They have to have at least two to three months incarceration period to be qualified for it. And normally our inmates on average stay there about six months. So, you know, it could be if they're there six months to a year and they qualify, they have, they have to apply. We screen them based on their past criminal history and behavior while they were in other facilities and with us. And then their job potential, their skill, and if, if they meet all those criteria, then and the sentence fits, we'll, we'll accept them. Will the businesses be screened because? Definitely. You know, it could be, you know, I'm not saying it would happen, you could have a relative or someone in there that may be getting them out just to be getting that. I'm not saying it would, but. Also inappropriate behavior in the workplace. You know, we can't subject our, you know, our in inmates to those kind of environments and expect them to act right when their surroundings is totally against our policy. So all those come into play. Employers like it because they are pretty, pretty sure that the uh, employer will show up in those cases. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, do you have a lot of uh, inmates out there that are contempt of court for um, child uh, support? Yes, we do have some of those, and that's the biggest thing about this program is giving these individuals to help their families. You know, not so much themselves, but their families, and just being productive again. And a lot of these employers will employ them after, you know, they are released from our jurisdiction. So it's, it's a win-win for them. <coughs> Any questions on that? Okay. Um, next is the state letter pickup for December 2011. And I believe that's a total of 2447. That month. And the yearly activity report uh, reflects average head count for that month. The biggest thing on this is, you know, being our council. Well, low the last couple of months, like I said, there were some things we had to work out with getting some guys that were medically qualified, and that has really improved in the last two to three weeks, so we're working on that process. GD program is going great. They just had a test, actually, and we haven't got the results yet. We had I think a total of 12, maybe 14 inmates from our facility and with conjunction with the Sheriff's Department actually take the test and it was at the Sheriff's Department. Do I 
Any questions? Yeah. Commissioner Phillips mentioned something on that art project that you're looking into. Yes. And about it being no cost. Well, where's the supplies come from? Um, she's getting a lot of volunteers to donate the uh, supplies. You know, we have to supply for, for the most part is the inmate and a space to actually conduct the program. Good. Motion to approve the report. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, County Fire and Rescue. And it's on the table as well. Come right ahead. The uh, first sheet is just a report of some of the activities and things that I've done uh, <coughs> in January. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out is March 5th, we start our, one of our rookie schools this year for all of our firefighters, which will be 80 hours of, of firefighting and uh, a week long of extrication class. So when they come out of there, they'll have their, their firefighting training and extrication, so they'll be able to do, do fire and rescue. And then February the 22nd, we will be having a, starting a first medical first responders class. Uh, so we have two of those classes going on which is at no cost to any of our firefighters. How many people sign up for classes? We're using around about 25 into the uh, rookie class and the medical class. They can only take about 24. I, when I was active volunteer, that same class would cost over $200. So, I mean, that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. we, we're very pleased to be able to do that, and, and of course that medical class is a, cr a credit to Director Nunley of EMS. He's been a big advocate for this and that. So, also we've had a, a lot of uh, interest in training. We had a training last Thursday night with uh, our department. Eagle came came in and trained. We had close to 65 firefighters in that training Thursday night. Uh, We've had some people from Foster come out and train with us, and we've also got a request today from Walter Hill to be a part of our training. So we're trying to pull everybody in at least at least once a month, have everybody train together to have multi-company uh, drills where, we, where it helps us to work better and, and uh, operate better when we're all working on fire scene together. Well, not only the, the multi-company drills, it helps as far as all different departments, their ISO ratings, they get credit for that during those type of ratings when they, they occur. so mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons we've started doing it. <coughs> the uh, second sheet is the uh, motor vehicle report accidents. We had 34 calls for, for this month of January, uh, end of December and 1st of January. And our actually uh, with the D District 21 back in the plan <coughs> five zone instead of four, our response time actually dropped down to 6.7 minutes per Per run, so it's uh, it's increased our response time area that in that uh, that part of the county. That that response time rivals any professional service out there. Well, of course we we have. I'm, I'm proud of it since we're using volunteers, but it's definitely decreased uh, over. Since we put this in operation, next sheet is a uh, report of uh, water usage, the training hours, and then of course the total call volume for the year. And according to the records, the best I can tell, we had uh, 22 actual extrications that were performed uh, by the four districts that did it last year. That's where they were actually cut out of vehicle. Next sheet is just a, a report that we turn into the code department that were actually had uh, structures that had fire <coughs> damage to some extent, and this is what we this is the same report we give the code department. Larry, is that River Lane off Trimble? That's oh. out there off Trimble Road. Yeah, I yeah. always call it R River Road. And that's what was well, yeah, it is, I believe it is River Lane. Uh, 
uh, we, had a off we had a structure fire uh, Christmas night out there. Yeah, River River Road is off Sulphur Springs. Springs. And then, of course, the last uh, sheet is a letter that uh, I received. Uh, I want to share with y'all really commending the Kittrell Volunteer Fire Department for their response to a MBA that was on John Bragg Highway. And they were very complimentary of the Rutherford County EMS and also our, the Sheriff's Department. So I just want, whenever people want to brag on our guys, I want to make sure you y'all are aware of it. Well, and there was also, I think, the same person wrote a letter to the editor in the newspaper. Editor paper. Mm -hmm. So, but I just want to make sure y'all were aware of it. <coughs> <coughs> That's all I've got. Yeah. 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 In the meth lab, was there anything that was on the 12th? Mm -hmm. so, look at that. It didn't flow, did it? No, it no. Uh, it was just they actually, what happened is uh, we received a call out there at Barfield Crescent Road. A young lady had went in there and uh, had burns on her hands. And uh, they interviewed her, and she said that her boyfriend had poured baking soda in her seat, but it was, it was actually meth chemicals. And upon questioning her, they discovered where the meth house was, so we responded out there to dismantle that. Uh, it was kind of funny. I was out there on the scene, and that's Commissioner Salmon's there, and he drove by, asked me what was going on. I told him, he said, well, we don't have them in my area. I said, well, you better tell them. <laughs> 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 But these things can just about occur anywhere. Yeah, okay. any, any more questions? <coughs> uh, entertain a motion. Motion to. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, emergency management agency. And I believe it's on the table as well. Good evening. There's not a, a whole lot in here, but I want to bring your attention to a, a few things. On the 25th, had a fire at a specialty arm shop in Laverne, and they requested us out there because there were a lot of explosions from ammunition in that store. Uh, no one got hurt. Uh, we have had some bad weather. I, I was almost certain we'd had some problems last night, but we didn't. But uh, we did go out on the 17th to a possible uh, tornado touchdown in the 35, 4,000 block of North Lamar Road. And it was uh, <coughs> determined it was an EF0. Mostly tree damage and minor damage to any structures. There was an overtone, overturned trailer, uh, but it was... Um, luxury camping trailer thing it wasn't a, a house being lived in on the 22nd we responded to mobile command center for mutual aid in murfreesville city for uh, manhunt for an individual that jumped into the river and um, they did find him he'd swam over got out but the mobile command was requested responded out set up and and uh, Murphy, Murfreesboro City utilized it and the fire department as well. It worked okay. Is that the vandalism uh, episode? Yes. And uh, like always, we're monitoring and, and working on these severe weather <coughs> situations. Uh, we were lucky and had no uh, major damages <coughs> last night, nor on the 17th. EF Hill set down. Unlike Alabama, do you? Oh, Alabama, I think right now they've got two fatalities. Okay. So far. I hate where my wife's from. Mm. This was yesterday, last night? Yes, sir. Good morning. Did any of our neighboring counties have any major issues that you've heard of? No, sir. It, it was some strong winds. It was it was ready, but uh, I think Dixon, the tornadic activity stayed up a little bit. Dixon had some, yeah. some Dixon, tree damage. Dixon, Fairview, and the area out there had some. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then on the second page, you have a uh, communication project update. 
the um, Milton Tower bid is on the street. We should be opening that on the 22nd of February and be able to get started on that tower. Uh, site prep for the building on Tiger Hill is almost complete. Weather has had a big factor in them getting that ready. But the uh, estimate is now that we should be able to set that shelter next week, by sometime next week. So uh, we're looking forward to getting that done, getting power into it. And uh, discussions are, are still ongoing with vendors on the microwave radio systems on what we're going to need, et cetera. But everything is, is working uh, as planned for the most part, with some delays because of weather. Now, where will the problem areas be once the, all the towers are put in place? In the well, um, according to the information I have and our best estimates, we're going to take care of the problem areas. Okay. So, I won't sit here and say that we'll have 100%, but I think we'll be awfully close. Okay, I know out in his neck of the woods and out in the Eagleville Fosterville area, it's the, in the Kittrell area, out Milton. Yeah. I know where it'll be. <laughs> yeah. I think with the simulcasting system that is going in place, and, and that's with microwaves, um, the county's spending some good money to do this right. And, oh, yes. And it's, it's being done right. One thing we've done is the, the 9 with the Sheriff's Department of Communication, and now the towers are. Yes. Communication should be. Well, I'll be sure to let y'all know. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we'll be checking too, but well, I, I'm so sure will, you will. So will I. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. I expect you to. Any any more questions for Rodney? If there's no other questions, I entertain a motion for his report. Motion to approve the report. Second. second. And a motion and a second. I'll turn the motion to say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion is carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Drug court report. And she's got it. The report I'm handing you all is actually the report I gave to the um, Support Foundation last week. I didn't have time to do another one today. So that November 14th date is wrong. I just didn't change it from the report I'd done previously. So <laughs> I just looked all messed up. But the, the narrative is, is in there, and it's, it's all about money, which is pretty much what I'm all about is money. Um, so you can see that our numbers with drug court are more or less the same. DUI continues to slowly inch up day by day. We took in another one today. So we're actually, our official um, count is 30 on DUI. Any questions about the numbers? The narrative is just about all the grants I'm applying for through the foundation. Um, as I've told you in the past, I, I have access to different foundations through our support foundation, so I'm really hitting up a lot of those. Um, the foundation voted again last week to uh, be very supportive of us financially and, and are pretty much giving any money that comes in that other than what they need to cover their cost, of course, um, is available <coughs> to the drug court and DUI court program, so they will be helping with uh, staff salaries again, not only this six months for Marcus, who came back. I've been telling so many people this story, I don't know if I've told you all, but Marcus, our DUI case manager who left November 12th, has returned, um, and I did meet with the mayor and Lisa Nolan before I agreed to hire him back to make sure we did could do it financially beyond June, um, but are only able to do that with the foundation's help. So. Um, he's back and he's happy. He wasn't very happy working in a jail. Apparently that's not conducive for everybody. <laughs> so he's, he's very, we're very happy to have him back and he's happy to be back. So um, 
Just lots of money coming down. Got a check today for three thousand five hundred from Cardinal Health. Um, I have a meeting February first with the Baptist Healing Trust. They actually, after you submit your preliminary grant, they like to interview you and make sure it's a good fit. So I'm very <coughs> encouraged that um, I'm getting to stage two with them because I'm requesting thirty-five thousand from them uh, to hopefully pay for um, Kay Haskell's salary next fiscal year. We still haven't finalized the um, being a provider for the state. Um, Ms. Abbott from the state was supposed to meet with us last Thursday and she had to cancel. She had to go to Memphis. She's meeting with us again this Thursday, or not again, she's meeting with us this Thursday. So I will have more information on exactly how that's gonna work and when that hopefully is gonna start. I, I wanna start billing, so. Um, but I, I'm still real excited about that. What is department it? is it with the state? I'm sorry. It's, it's the Department of um, Mental Health and Retardation, but the Bureau of Alcohol and Drug Abuse Services is under that department. It's the old Bureau of Alcohol and Drug Abuse Services. I really don't know what they're called now. Okay. Yeah, but we will, um, it's not, again, it's not a grant. It's just we provide fee for service is what it, it would be. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it so much per case or yes. is it? Okay. Yes, it's like 25 per group, 50 per individual session, 25 per group session. Um, and if you do intensive outpatient pro program, which is three hours, three times a week, you get, I think, $55 a session. So, okay. Um, so it could add up. And of course, you have to meet all the criteria, which some of our people may not meet the criteria. That's some of the questions <coughs> we have is, if you have insurance but you've run through insurance and we don't even accept insurance, are they qualified for this program? You know, stuff like that, I just don't know. So. Um, so that's about, yeah, as um, Mr. Solandi said earlier, we're still working on some deals with the uh, Rutherford County Work Center as well to provide services out there. So I think um, they've asked me to come to the next board meeting for that. Now, would you, st would you be uh, entirely at the, at the workhouse or would you be split between where you're at now and the workhouse? I think we're just teaching classes out there. Okay. Right now. Uh, I didn't know it's about moving in out there. I didn't know what. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, we had talked about that a little bit. I, I really, I'm not sure there's enough room, to be honest. I'd have to go out there and look at it again. But it is something that might be happening <coughs> someday, but I'm, I'm not yeah. sure we have enough I didn't know, because, I mean, in what he said, y'all be moving in out there, then yeah. I seen here when you were talking about Teaching the D.U.I. schools. Yeah. 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 We actually had those discussions. Mm -hmm. We just haven't done all our homework. Oh, okay. We'll be doing that next season. Yeah. And I, yeah. DUI program mm -hmm. from when they first start mm -hmm. and then what's the month of time? It's they pretty much finish it in twelve months. Okay. They're they're on top of it. They're a much more motivated group of people. So if you start using uh, out at the correctional work center, mm -hmm. uh, inmates out there, and then when they get released out there, then they'll come over here to this building well to go that's through. an option i think that's longer down the road what we're actually looking at is doing that 12-hour dui school okay. that everybody has to do to get their license back that's the wow. first thing we're talking about right now so. but that's my report i do have an amendment okay amendment. any questions on the report move to approve the report second. motion and a second on the report all in favor of the motion say aye aye all opposed motion is carried on the budget amendment. <coughs> um, this is overtime pay that I incurred when Marcus left the program and we had to pay him for his comp time. So that's what we had to pay him. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. A second. Question. Mm -hmm. um, so we've already paid him out. Mm -hmm. He's coming back in with, with no comp time? Nothing. Nothing. Well, they gave him back his sick time, which surprised me, but no comp time or vacation time. That was all paid out. Okay. How long has he been with the county? Oh, well, since the DUI program started, so since 2008. So, 
he's a good employee. He really is. I was really sorry he left, but I'm really happy he came back. So if you quit and 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 come back, you get your sick time back. Apparently so. Mm -hmm. Does he say yes? Doesn't have to be. Thank you. I think I've got the original that you need, isn't it? The original? Okay. Um, that's where it works for state employees. He's yeah, he, he keeps was, it. He, he wasn't. Uh, so did we pass that? That's where it works. Uh, yeah. yeah. He wasn't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he invested, yeah. Invested. All right. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Yeah. Motion to approve the motion. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, we did that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Call roll. Right. Okay. I got off track asking questions. That's okay. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Pease? Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips? Yes. Commissioner Shaver? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that okay. it? Yep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you. Juvenile Detention Report and also a budget amendment, I do believe. Yes, sir. <coughs> On your desk. Good evening. You have a two months report in front of you. Uh, uh, last month I had to be in the hospital with a family member. And I apologize for getting back in touch with you. I don't check my emails at home too often. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Um, so we have November and December uh, report in front of you, and I will happily answer. Any questions that you might have regarding either of those two reports? Anything unusual? Uh, no, I took a good look at it. The only thing that I thought was interesting that was that uh, it's, it's starting to appear that the more young people that we have that are on prescription medications, the higher our uh, disciplinary actions go. And I just thought that was interesting. Hmm. Um, but beyond that, everything is uh, shaping up like it usually does. Don't look like we're too far out of line on billing or returning, except Sumner County. What five thousand? That that was a uh, one month occurrence, so they just had a lot of business that month. Oh, okay. So. What about Coffee County? Because they had November that they owed, and they had one out. Did they pay the one off, and then? I am not sure about that, but I know that. Um, <coughs> None of the counties that we do regular business with uh, have really, in many, uh, many, well, I, probably since the new building, have gotten behind. They've okay. always paid uh, month to month. So it's, it's not something that I'm concerned about. Okay. You mentioned uh, uh, prescribed medication and disciplinary action. Can you... Can, can you show me on this report what you're talking about? Okay. Um, both reports are the same. <coughs> it's underneath the um, dark black line, and you'll see detainees with uh, RXs and average, and then two lines above that, detainees disciplinary. And, for example, in October, 31 disciplinary actions, and November it was 61. And then if you'll look and see that the uh, average detainees with uh, prescription meds was <coughs> four for the low number and 10 for the high number. Any questions on the report? Is there a motion? Motion to approve the report. Motion, do we have a second? And a second. Call if I have the motion to say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. You got a budget amendment? I do have a budget amendment. Um, it's for $5,550. It is uh, to go into maintenance agreements from unassigned fund balance. Uh, this is a, kind of a lengthy story, but uh, prior <coughs> to uh, Superintendent Salandi uh, coming with the Correctional Work Center, there had been an agreement with the prior uh, workhouse director that he was going to pay uh, for a security uh, agreement for his department and for the juvenile detention center, and that just didn't get past the uh, direct superintendent Salandi, so that uh, he had the money, but he did not know it was earmarked, so therefore it was spent 
and the bill still exists. So we're moving it back into my department and we're trying to take care of paying that bill since that money wasn't originally in my department. Would, during this, I read the part down here, the explanation. At some point during that year, was it ever cut off as far as? No. There's, no, there's, they, still. They've, they, there's been correspondence back and forth between taking care of invoices, and then that's when everybody's like, what are you talking about with the security company? So after many months yes. of investigation, we finally figured out what happened. And it needs to be in the, who's ever got the system, it needs to be in their budget. And, it, and uh, now it is. Okay. Or will be. Can we backtrack just a minute? I just want to make sure. sure. Okay. The way I was getting what you said, it was in, it wasn't in your budget because the way things are switched around. And the money then got spent by somebody else, and now there is no way that they can adjust funds to make up for what they spent. That's my so, understanding. So we can't, uh, so we have to go to unassigned, uh, well, whatever it's called now. Right, I, I, I'm used to calling balance, it you know, undesignated yeah. fund right. balance to pay for this. That's my understanding. Yeah. Well, you say on this explanation down here that the funds were, so when they're at the end of the year, if they're not appropriated, then they go back to Indian fund balance, and that's what you indicate here. Isn't it? it said the remaining funds appropriated lapse to fund balance at the close. Well, th that was in the Correctional Work Center's budget. So I just, you know, about a month ago, got pulled into the loop on this particular budget amendment. Um, so the, it, whether or not it, I don't know if it lapsed and, and went back into undesignated or if it was spent, I know it's not there. Um, well, we got a bill we got to pay. I, I'm gonna make a motion to approve, but you know, I'm getting conflicting information there when I see that and you say it was spent, so. Well, it, it wasn't, <coughs> perhaps I, I misspoke. We didn't pay the bill, the bill hadn't been paid. Well, I'm, yeah, bottom line, we so gotta pay it, so. We could have paid it, we didn't pay it, and now we gotta pay it, and it's, and it's different fiscal year. Yeah. So the Superintendent Solani didn't, didn't know. I don't think he even knew that it was, the money was in his budget. Uh, earmarked for <coughs> particular. He, you know. he just knew that in a certain line item, he had a certain amount of money, and didn't know anything about an agreement that that's the prior a, director, that's my understanding. our yeah. superintendent, right. had no fault of his. Yes, and, that, and now we're correcting the problem, and in next budget year it'll be corrected for the future, so we shouldn't have to revisit Somewhere, this. Somebody had more money than they were supposed to have, though. That's what the bottom line is. Fund balance at the end of you're saying on June 30th last year, July 1st. I can hear left. All right. So what you're saying, Mayor, is it really was not spent? It wasn't. Okay. 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 We just now paying the bill. It's quite old. All right. Is there any other questions? Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought. There you go. Got to top it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought somebody second a while ago. <laughs> I thought uh, we got a motion to second. Call roll. Commissioner Gooch. Yes. Commissioner Hayes. Yes. Commissioner <coughs> Jeff Hill. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Shazer. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Bear with me. You got it straight. You get for budget next time, don't you? Can you get it? Can you explain that budget? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, right. Share the part. I'm going to tell them. Just like I understand it, they don't know. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's a Monday. Okay, if they want that Monday, it's too late. I'll tell you what. Come down, pass around. My first responder skills come in today, Mike. Did they let you come alone today? <laughs> I'm all alone. Imagine that. <laughs> Actually, the sheriff uh, wanted me to apologize for his absence. He's at uh, he's at a class, and so one of our administrative staff. Yeah, it's all the same thing. Yeah, oh. if you got any extras, I'll take them. So, all right. First item up for bid. Okay, so talking to Mike, who's in, in charge of our communications department, he had fifteen hundred dollars left over, and we were needing to put money into the uh, jail uh, maintenance line item. Clear. So yes. 
Communication equipment. What? There's. The it's, just, it's just maintenance and repair communication equipment, and so. That's on mobile since radios. He's getting, handhelds. No, actually, it's a different line item. All right. Com communication. It, what it, kind it's of? It's part. Of, it's part of. Uh, it's part of the uh, dispatch center's equipment that they would normally need, but since they're getting all new equipment this year. He's not needing any oh, okay. new stuff, so this is a left. So he just he came to me and said, "Hey, we don't need this money in our budget since we're getting all whole new dispatch center put in." So he knew that the jail needed some uh, maintenance and repair funds, so he was donating to the cause. Okay. So um, so we're moving that money to jail maintenance. Um, then we had a grant come in, uh, the SCAP grant, uh, which is to be used for jail maintenance as well. That's what it's supposed to be used for. So we that's come in, and there uh, it's going to go into the same line item for <coughs> jail maintenance. The uh, this is an interesting one. I think you guys will like this one. The SRO division uh, has requested sound suppressors for their uh, for their rifles uh, in the event that they have an active school shooter situation. Uh, they'll control the report uh, inside the school buildings, which means you won't hear them coming. So don't think about going to the school. And, doing a Columbine or anything like that. So uh, that's what they're wanting to do. So they want, in the instructional supply line item, they have $5,000 there that they want to uh, move over to the other supply line item so they can buy those suppressors. Then uh, the last item here on this page is uh, food service equipment. You know, since we're getting a new kitchen, uh, we're not buying equipment for the kitchen. So that's what this line item was for. Uh, we're going to move that over to the custodial supplies line item for the jail so we can uh, continue to buy cleaning supplies and toilet paper and all that kind of stuff. And then, the and next page. Why are we running short? We're actually up on inmates. Uh, we, we've been hitting a little over 800 continuously here lately, so our count's up. Um, you know, a lot of the budget numbers were based on uh, 700, and we're just we got a few more visitors than we've been expecting. So, um, so that's where we're at. And so we're just, and we're, and we're also just trying to plan ahead because I, some of these shortfalls, I'm not out yet, but I can see it coming, and so uh, I'm going ahead and moving these funds now. Are any of those inmates over the 700 capable of being moved to the workhouse? Uh, I believe that the workhouse has full control of getting as many inmates in their facility as possible, and that is up to them. That's totally in their control now. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're not doing that anymore. That's well, up to them. I, I and so caught that when yeah. he was giving his report. <laughs> I just wanted to make just sure. Double check. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I was looking at your line item there for custodial supplies. You only got a half a percent left yep. in that. Yep. Have you already bought and stuff? Well, a lot, a lot of stuff is just encumbered. And, and so purchase orders are sitting there waiting. But uh, but I know that that's not going to last the rest of the year. So, but we do have a good inventory for the moment. But we just our numbers are up. We're up over 800 a day, so, you know. I'm not real sure I understood the $5,000 again for suppressors. Yes, uh, Could you no problem. run that through me one Sure. One more the time? SROs, uh, if you have an active shooter in the building um, and you're going to have to be returning fire, you don't want to, to, when you return fire, you don't want your position known. Uh, if you've got somebody that you're sneaking up behind and you shoot and miss, you don't want them to know where you came from. Talking about silencers. Silencers. It's a suppressor. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Thanks. Silencer, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for using that. Yeah. <laughs> so how I was used to call them that because I working at Barrett, they were always called suppressors, and I got chastised several times for calling them suppressors. Silencers, I don't know why. I, I learned to suppress the silencers, too. So. Anyway. How many rifles will that uh, silence? It'll cover, I don't know the specific amount. I would imagine around 17. 15 to 17, those things are not cheap. I know that the, I know that the going price on those, it depends, but uh, well, I, I can give you a specific lot, number. I thought it would be a lot more it, than that. No, those things are not cheap. For that many, for that many, I mean, I, I think that that's a low price from what I've seen of some of the costs. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, we, we, we get a deal on stuff, believe me, yeah. So we'll get them at a discounted rate. Um, the next one, next page, has got a whole bunch of numbers on it is to get the jail some overtime money. So what we're gonna do is we're pulling 20,000 from the sheriff's office overtime account and related this benefits. Right there. Oh, there it is. Page, page two there, yeah. And then, this is, this is you know, page I, one, page two? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, we've heard the request on the first page, one through five, uh, one through four. 
Is there any questions on that? If there's no questions, is there a motion? Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. Discussion. Hearing and seeing none, call a roll. Yes. <coughs> yeah, I heard you. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. All right, second place. Okay. Um, so the jail is out of overtime dollars. We moved uh, some temporarily last month to cover some shortfalls. Uh, these funds are to move the remaining what I think that they're going to need for the year, and they're just going to have to live with that best we can. Um, so what I've done is I've pulled uh, 20000 from some of the uh, departments and at the sheriff's office side that, that do not need overtime for this year. They have, they've done very well on their overtime, and so they're way ahead of the curve. So we're pulling $20,000 out of the sheriff's office side and related benefits. Um, the hazardous waste cleanup line item that you see there uh, was originally put in the budget because uh, the Tennessee TBI was not going to pay for that anymore when it was like a meth lab stuff like that that had to be cleaned up. The state of Tennessee has continued to fund that, so we don't foresee needing, needing those funds. So I went ahead and um, took 20000 out of that line item as well. And that, by the time you back out the related benefits, you end up with going into the jail side, $36,600 uh, of, uh, of overtime dollars available and then the related benefits. And that's, that's, that takes care of overtime for the jail. Line item number two. Question. Which, go ahead. All right. Overtime for jail. Where, where is that? It's all detention officers. Yes. For, well, I mean, or yeah. out sick, less staff. Yeah. Well, it's it's out uh, just a little bit of everything. It's out sick, less staff. Also, the the fifteen minutes before that they get that adds up every week. You know that adds up as well. So you've got a lot of issues back there. There's a few staffing shortages. There also was, um, uh, which I brought with me. They had, um, when they did the demolition on the kitchen, there was $10,000 worth of overtime for that, which got charged. And that's going to be reimbursed in the next amendment as well. Um, why would overtime be on the kitchen? It had it was, it's just part of the it was on You still have to oversee the reimbursement. It got reimbursed. They were working around the clock there for a while, so getting all that done. So there's, there's a lot of a lot of overtime that was covered. Um, there's a lot of officers that are always, you know, taking out, uh, taking time off during the holiday season. So you've got a lot of, a lot of overtime that you go through during that time. Uh, there was a lot of comp time buyouts this year. That that ratio seems to be going up year after year after year. Uh, so that's that's something that's starting to add up. Also, detentions doing transport for hospital stays and for mental hospital events. And um, I mean, it's just they, they've got training coverage that they have to take care of. There's a lot of guys out for training, and so uh, they just they just have a few shortages over there. <coughs> so that's where a lot of a lot of these dollars are going to. I looked last year; we ran out uh, in April, and so we ran out early this year. And so, but there are a few a few issues causing that. I, originally, I thought it was the uh, the ball games and all that, but that's not the issue. You know, you can go on to the next one. Or you yeah, got questions ahead. on that one? Okay. All right. When we did demolition on the kitchen, there was a bunch of stuff that had to be paid immediately, which we pulled out of our 707 line item. Um, and we paid out some overtime. So um, this item here that uh, 101, 34, 525 restricted for public safety, that's the uh, litigation fund. So we're going to pull 47,975 out of line item. 37082 is going to go into 707, which covered the expenses of uh, things like tile and humidifiers, uh, the carriers that we had to use to transport all the food back and forth, uh, pumped out the grease trap, which had never been pumped out before, so that was kind of expensive. Uh, just all kinds of new, new things that had to be done. So that, that covered all the equipment that we've replaced to this point. Now the site's ready to be constructed. So going forward, there won't be any demo on the bid. 
they won't need any of that done. It'll all be new installation. Um, and then you got overtime being reimbursed that was used for that time, and then uh, the related benefits regarding overtime. And that's it. Any questions? Any questions? Is there a motion? Move to approve. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Uh, discussion. So you were able to pull 47.9 out of the litigation fund? Yes, sir. Make sure I'm following it. That's all that's in there for all practical purposes. It will be now empty. Well, that's that's where I was headed because, I mean, you're asking us for $100,000 here tonight. So. Well, I'm moving. You're moving the 47 out of the, um, yeah. most of, <coughs> almost half of it out of the litigation. Yes, so. Mm -hmm. What's the rest of that? That comes going to pay for something. Fuck. But it's the earmark. Yeah. Several dollar dollars earmark. Uh, yeah. There's a brick remediation. And, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. In, and, 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 and in the future, yeah, 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 that's why it's so in the yeah. But in the future, what we gain back is paying off something. It's paying off the bond and then the correctional work for the company. You know how much? How long that's supposed to be? Or? questions the the overtime on the demolition that was your folks overseeing the demolition exactly what were they doing to incur the overtime well you got the we got the um, trustee labor coming in and doing the work and, um, and and even our guys are in there they're working too they're they're down there on their hands and knees and everything but you still have to have somebody an officer oversee that crew and since the jail side is short staffed to begin with we can't can't pull somebody down from one of the towers to watch the guys doing the work. So that so we still have to have our maintenance personnel. And of course, you have to have somebody that knows what they're doing anyway. So the maintenance personnel is watching the crews doing the work. So this was overtime yeah. for maintenance personnel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, some of those guys were pulling 80 hours. It was it was crazy how much work they were doing. But it's, it's all done and it's ready to go. There's maintenance uh, people and detention officers. No, it was just it was mainly ma well, it was all maintenance personnel except for one guy, and uh, he was a patrol officer that he pulled over, needed some overtime or needed some extra money, and we had the opportunity, so we gave it to him. And uh, he had a construction background, and that was the only reason he got to do it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, that was one of the main reasons he got to do that. And it was some awful work. I mean, it was whew. they dug out all the all that sewer water that in the in the foundation and all that gravel, it was some nasty stuff. So it was not a fun job back there. Anybody else? All right, hearing none, we got a motion and we got a second. All right, no, no more discussion. Call the room. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Steve? No. Yes. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips? Yes. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips? Yes. Commissioner Shaper? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Now, the next uh, is just our normal uh, report from the two departments. And I'll answer any questions you've got on that. <coughs> Once you've had a chance, let's do it. Entertain a motion on it. Some form of fashion. Make sure for the report. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. <laughs> Commissioner Phillips and Commissioner Phillips. Motion and a second. <laughs> What, uh, Joe, what's the, the fund for transporting or going out and picking up prisoners and bringing them back here? To oh, on the jail side? 
Uh, that is that is actually for extraditions. Yeah, so that's fifty thousand dollars a year that we put into that, mm -hmm. and uh, that usually runs out sooner or later uh, in the year, and then we'll all have to panic and try to find money for that as well. Mm -hmm. What's the fund number? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm gonna look here. I can never keep all this stuff straight. Prisoner transport uh, fifty four two ten three fifty four. So it's towards the top of the yeah, second page. Okay. Yeah. So you can see we're down to twenty eight percent already. Last yeah, yeah, I say, yeah. And yeah, yeah. that line item actually gets reimbursed through. Yeah, but those we, individuals we, have to pay that back. Yeah, but we never years. amend money back into that line item. We just basically budget fifty thousand for the year, and then going back if, if we run out, then I've got to find it <coughs> in our budget to, to cover mm -hmm. those expenses. Right, we got a motion and a second on the floor for the report. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and then one last, a uh, couple last things here. Um, we're going to have a uh, open house March 10th at the jail. The public's invited. So mark your calendars. There'll be more details to follow. We'll probably put out a blur. Of course, we'll have it on our Facebook and all that as to the dates, times, and all that good stuff. But it will be March 10th. And so be people can come in and tour the facility and uh, um, things like that. Just want to make everybody aware of that. And with that, that's all I got. I thank you for your time. You know, usually got um, had a boys each month. Uh, yeah, well, the person that normally does that was out sick today, so okay. I guess I'll have them next time. <laughs> well, you know, those are really good reading. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you hear the bad stuff in the news media sometimes about when you know employees do things wrong, and mm -hmm. I like getting those and. and same what employees yeah, it's always right. nice to hear. Just like the Hamlet service, we get those every month. And That's right. So I'll have those for you next month, though. Right, okay. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Uh, OSHA report. <coughs> How you doing? Doing well, thank you. It's on the, on the desk. <coughs> In the month of December, we had a total of uh, 16 injuries requiring medical attention. You can see the breakout there. Uh, bringing the total for the year uh, to 239 injuries. Of those 239, 169 were OSHA recordable. 86 had lost days. 30 with loss, uh, or I'm sorry, excuse me, 86 were restricted days. 30 lost claims, and then 53 all others. Next page will show you what the graph looks like uh, for 2011 compared to the two previous years, 2009 and 2010. Do you know what the totals were for those two years? Yes, sir, I do. In 2009, it was 243, and in 2010, it was 210, and this past year, it was 237. Next page, of course, has a breakdown for the month of December. The month of December with the 16, the total incurred dollars for that month was 26,350. Uh, of those uh, injuries, the Board of Education had 10 of them, and the total incurred dollars there were 16,800. The County General had six for just under 10,000 at 9,550. And then uh, the next page is where I took that and broke that down, the county general, to the different departments that you've requested. And it's still six, the same incurred dollars, but you can see the breakdown there as to whether it goes to uh, uh, judicial building, uh, Paul, correctional work center, workhouse, property assessor, and then the sheriff's department is how that breaks down. Since uh, OSHA is done on a calendar year, I went ahead and did a summary for you for the calendar year. And you'll see, of course, uh, the 239 claims that require medical attention. The total incurred dollars at this time is $551,930. Of those uh, 239 claims, 52 of them are still open because they haven't had time to close. So those uh, <coughs> incurred dollars can still fluctu fluctuate as far as, uh, you know, if something closes. Uh, and requires less dollars that be pulled out, or if it's going to require more dollars, that will uh, a little bit could add to. So just let you make you aware that that's still a little bit of uh, 
in flux there. Because obviously, it's up, today's only the 20th, so the ones that happen in the, the month have only had 20 days to mature, so uh, just repeat that. Um, when you look at the Board of Education for the year, the Board of Education had 111 injuries. And the total dollars incurred for them was 190178 The highway department had six claims for the year, and their total dollars uh, incurred was 30643 And then the county general had 122 claims, and the total dollars in that was 331109 And then again, I went ahead and broke that down for the county for the different departments and you'll see all the departments there and you'll see the claim count for the different locations in the county and how that all broke down there for you. One last thing in the report, the end of the year, one of the requirements of OSHA is that we're required to put out a Form 300A, which is a summary that's supposed to be posted in all the buildings. Uh, we met with all the uh, individuals from the uh, county's uh, safety committee, and they were given a copy of this to put in their buildings. We'll also be sending this out to the Board of Education and all the schools by email, uh, just so you have it. There's a copy of it listed for you there also, and you'll notice uh, the average number of employees for the county was uh, 5,853. I got that from the finance department, along with the total hours worked for the county last year was 9 million. 484,736 hours. Are there any questions? Do you have any questions? Yeah. In the last three years? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't, yeah, I guess you go by calendar year. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, on for us, we do. Okay. Is there a way that you can go through the recordables? and find out repeat offenders, if any? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I, you know, I'd be interested to know if we've got some of these. And so will you track that normally? Or, I mean, is that something you norm uh, normally look at or? Uh, when the names crop up, yes, it, it, it hits a flag because I handle each and every claim myself personally comes mm -hmm. across, I see the names of them. And I can do that, yes, sir. Now, the only thing about it is, is uh, I can, <coughs> like I say, sort that out. Um, it won't be a problem. It won't okay. be a problem. Yeah, just let us know. Next I can month. do that next, next month. That'd yes, sir. Great. That's not a problem. Thank you. I, I'd prefer not to, if it's okay with you, I can give you a handwritten copy, and then you can just take that with that rather than discuss the names in here, okay. that's okay. okay. But we, we said we wouldn't give that copy. No, I'm not interested in that. I was going to say that. Right. You no, but if I say, if I, just when, I, okay. when I'm getting at it, I'm getting, I, I expected it to come out it's gonna be from you. Long, long with, long hit, so no. we cannot give out the name. No, but then, but then it, you're going to be one to, or your office to handle them. Yeah. And if, if, if we know, if we got somebody who's had three or four in the last three years, then mm -hmm. there's something wrong. Well, I can tell you that some of the people who have had repeat claims, I do know that they're no longer with the county at this time. Now, I'm not saying that's because of that, but uh -huh. when you have those types of problems, usually they have <coughs> other problems <coughs> before they have problems with me. They have problems with somebody else, the department head, something like that. Okay. All right, anybody else? <coughs> yes, sir, do we have a motion? Motion. No motion. motion to approve. Second. We got a motion and a second. I'll have a motion to say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Hamlet service report. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark.
1,568 calls in December. Average response time was 7.5 minutes. 26 coroner's calls, and there was 10 uh, um, sent for autopsy. Then they billed $1,126,126 $1, $1, $1, collected $524,817. Since our year to date, it was a little uh, 80, 3680667 and our projected yearly at $6.1 million. We had insurance write-offs of $431,702. Collection agency write offs 180,529 and 776 for county workers. Mileage table at the bottom of the page is of a total of 33,353 miles. Those are significant repairs and the cost per mile is for you. And it says number 66, 67, and 68 were um, the three new ambulances that we got this year. Two of them have been put into service during this month. The other one is in service now. We had a total of 489 out of same calls. services and training as well as the, the different teams that we have at the annual service. And those are just listed for you here. The following page is response time report. District calls. Uh, and those are our calls that are segregated to the commission district. Also, the transport team calls. Mr. Young is still leading the pack with digging the hospitals out of his territory. What? <laughs> The way I'll redistrict it, it's going to get bigger too. So. <laughs> <coughs> the page after that is the same information before the new date. All of the pages is the matrix on where the calls are made and which ambulance made them. Manchester Station went into zone four 117 times, and, and that's not their zone, is it? No, zone four is in PSG. And then 26 in, in their own zone. They did a lot of roadside. In, in reality, you could have put Manchester's ambulance at MTSU, and it could have just covered the, and done the opposite and just run 26 calls out of zone the other way and, and to, to put a double ambulance in that station because as many calls as that MTSU runs. From a number zone that, that would work. <coughs> but, but another issue that we take into consideration when we put the ambulance somewhere is 
how long it's taken us to get to those areas. And uh, at the time we put the ambulance on Manchester Road, it, the, the response is greater than 12 minutes. That was the area of highest concern. Yeah, at one time, the best I can remember, it was about 17, 18 minute response time out there. Are most of those calls coming back in the city or are they in the, when they come back in, are they coming in to, they, are they coming in? They come, they come back and stand by at the, the intersection of uh, Murfreesboro Road and Rose Boulevard. Okay. You said Murfreesboro Road, then. Do you mean Broad Street? Yeah, Broad and Rutherford? Murfreesboro Road is there. <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> yes, sir. Broad Street. Any questions on the report? Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All in favor, motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Paul's report. For the month of December, we had 453 animals that came into the shelter. You can see there the breakdown of uh, the jurisdictions of where they came from. 36.5% came from county jurisdictions. 8.8% came from the city of Laverne. 40.4% came from the city of Murfreesboro. And 14.3% came from the town of Smyrna. Out of those 453 that came into the shelter, we had 501 that went out. So we were able to move more. Our animals left in the shelter <coughs> in the month were, were less than usual. Uh, we had a 31.9% adoption reclaim rate and a 64.5% and euthanasia rate. Uh, on December 31st, we did have 72 animals that remained in the shelter. Uh, a little over 2,200 people visited the shelter looking for a new or lost pet during the month. And we had 1,755 log calls and voicemails for the month of December. On the second page of the report, it breaks down our calls received and our calls completed. We had 1,112 calls received and 1,139 calls were completed for the month. You can see the breakdown there. It uh, mirrors fairly closely uh, to the, uh, the kennel intakes, the calls, uh, the jurisdictions uh, for the month, month due. Um, you can also see for the mileage that we had 8,416 miles traveled by our officers on the road. Third page uh, goes back for our fiscal year to date report. We've had 4,669 animals come into the shelter. Uh, you can see the breakdown there of the jurisdictions that they came from as well. 
and we had 4,752 animals uh, leave the shelter. Our yearly adoption rate was 20.7%, and our yearly euthanasia rate was 70.9%. We've had 12,292 people that have come into the shelter since the first of the fiscal year, and we've had 13,916 13, log calls and voicemails since July 1st. We've had 8,150 calls that were received, 8,152 calls that were completed during this fiscal year, and we've traveled 61,703 miles since July the 1st. Uh, the very last page of the report, our rabies exposure and bite reports for the month. We didn't have any other exposures for the month of December, but we did have 25 uh, bite reports. Out of those 25, 11 of those animals were sent off for testing, with zero of those testing positive uh, for the rabies virus during December. Well, I just want to tell you that getting that call volume I mean, I've read this month after month for several years, and you get, that's the closest I've ever seen this department on keeping up with the call volume. We're and I want to congratulate well, thank you, you on that. It's, it's thank not you. Uh, anything that I've done. When you hear me speak about the department, I don't say I and I, my and me and those type things. It's our department who works very, very hard, uh, and my officers are really getting out there and busted and providing a good service. But well, also I mean, that time you can now. tell it from that. Like I said, you know, we were always behind on that. Well, there's a lot of calls that uh, we still have a lot of trap calls. The weather has hurt us. The holidays have hurt us. Uh, we're fixed to go back into the busy season. So we're really trying to work to get those calls caught up so that we're, we're ahead of the eight ball on those. But uh, I do appreciate that, sir. Any questions on his report? Motion to approve the report. Second. Motion up second. Okay. Motion say aye. 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 All opposed, motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is to discuss the dates to review the department budgets and uh, Vicki has most graciously sent um, uh, the meeting dates, open dates in the, um, the room 205. Our normal public safety meeting for February is the 27th. And normally, um, we, each year, I think we go in to just so many departments, three budget, three nights, with one of them being a normal. And from what the sheriff indicated, he's here one night. And there's a possibility he probably needs a, one night for the sheriff department. And the other two nights, we can split between. Um, the other departments and that way whatever night the, the department shows up they don't have to show up to any more of them and so open dates are for february is the 21st 22nd 29th the normal meeting is the 27th so um, if we've done the 27th and the 29th that would be two in the last week um and then one like on the 21st or 22nd of February. Gary, did you say the 21st, 22nd were the open dates? 21st, 22nd, and 29th of okay. February. And the regular meeting is the 27th. So, but we only need three days of those four. Yeah. I like the, the 21st, 27th, and 29th work for me. No. The, the 21st, the 27th, and the 29th? Yes. I'd rather see 22nd, 27th, and 29th. I'd rather not do two Wednesdays. I'm sorry? I'd rather not do two Wednesdays because of church. Okay. Uh, the, t the 22nd and the 29th are, are two Wednesdays. Do you have a conflict on the 21st? Yeah. Commissioner, you do. But um, that's okay. I just I don't want to pose that. Uh, Oh. It, is that time for you, Mayor? That's enough time fine. for you to talk to yeah. each one of the departments? I'm, I'm flexible for either one. Yeah. So. I'm on shift, but I can get that swap. So well, we, it's no big deal. Uh, You're not coming back. Do we need to meet on into March? Well, that's what, we've got two, uh, mm -hmm. the first and the seventh and the nineteenth and the twentieth and the twenty-first of March. <coughs> you say the first, the seventh, the first, the seventh. 
Uh, 27th is the regular meeting. Well, the, the regular meeting for February would be the 27th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well, so, I'm more, well, if that's the case, to give the mayor time too, to, uh, the regular meeting of the 27th, um, then maybe the, well, the, the first is just one day difference. And the 7th and the 19th, Of March. Um, what you might want to do is um, designate two or three budgets for the twenty seventh, if that's what you're talking about, and then designate, and then have everyone else come because that's the February meeting, and you're doing some of these other budgets in conjunction with March. Mm -hmm. um, would it be better instead of us designating maybe the mayor because he knows which ones will be ready by? Then and probably be easier on, I don't know the day, on the uh, mayor. There are some of these that on the 27th we can have meetings with them there too as a future mm -hmm. budget likely that we can work through. So, uh, well, what, what about the, if it's okay with the committee? I'd say if we could put off the sheriff's budget and the ambulance budget a little longer, they need more time. Right. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. others, you can just sort of pick your, pick your time on those. What if, what, what if we were to do um, the sheriff budget on the 19th of March? And it's a, are we going to use this room or are we going to go? If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's spring break week and I'm, was that right? I'm going to, I think it is. It is. It's spring break week. And oh, is it? Yeah, I'm going to be in Mexico. That's my anniversary too. <laughs> If I get my uh, Congratulations. passport back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How about the 14th? I almost forgot until you said spring break. Oh, uh, I think it is. It, it is. It is. I'm passionate about that. We better get out. Maybe the chief leaves it and I'm not. We, we get a consolidated budget for the budget and finance committee on May the 10th. That's good. C couldn't we, just yeah. as an example, do uh, s several of the ones that won't take a lot of time on the February the 27th, and then do uh, a couple of the other ones on the 26th, and then maybe even meet on the 28th of March uh, and do the sheriff. I'd rather not do the 28th. That's my wedding anniversary, and I need to be there. <laughs> well, we got two anniversaries <laughs> in the month yeah. of March. <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to get to D-Day, and that's what <laughs> <laughs> um, On the 27th, it, it, if whichever one, a couple, February, February, yeah. February, whichever ones you want to put. We, we can pick, you know, there's several of those, uh, mm -hmm. except for the ambulance and the sheriff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can finish them up next time on the March, 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 March meeting. March mm -hmm. meeting, finish all those on March. Mm -hmm. So we won't have to have any extra ones. And with, if the March meeting will finish up the others plus the ambulance, and that only leaves you the sheriff. So we really only need to schedule one extra meeting then. Probably. What happened to the, I thought you said the 14th this was open. What happened to it? Is that enough? Or is, of March, is that enough time for the sheriff? No, we won't wait till after the 26th of March. Okay. But last year we postponed him. Yeah. At the last minute. So, so we'll do some on the 27th of February and we'll do some on the 26th of March. Okay. Some of them, and then the, sh the and sheriff will be the only thing remaining after that. Okay, right. and then, we'll, then the 26th of March we'll schedule another date for the sheriff. Well, one thing I'll remind you too, if I'm not mistaken, the 26th, you've got a subpoena, or uh, several of us do, uh, we could be called into trial that week. April. Yeah. yeah, if that's what you're talking about, was it April? No, March. No, March. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm forward yeah. one then. I, I, thought you were, I thought we were talking April then. I read March 26th is your second regular meeting, and we'll finish the balance of the other departments plus the ambulance. All right. The other so you can set the sheriff's time either next February meeting or March meeting and still be okay. Okay. Right. Is that a plan? No. It's a plan. Okay. All right. So we won't schedule any extra meetings 
except for the chair. Except for the chair. Okay. All right. So, if, if, will they all still come to the, the regular meetings or just have them? That, well, they'll all have to come to the regular meeting because mm -hmm. it's, it's a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Some of them may give a budget, some of them may not. Will they have them in yet? Yeah. Yeah. You make sure that the sheriff is going to sign. Anybody? All right. All right. Now I'll let the mayor. Okay. All right. Is there any other business coming for the committee tonight? If not, we stand adjourned. Thank y'all.